at a time. And the thing that we're going to do that we haven't been doing in the Eucharist is we're bringing up the gifts of the people, not, not the bread and the wine only, but a number of you, most of you actually, have been sending in your pledges. And we've not been uh, ritualizing the reception of those. And um, there are four movements in the Eucharist. Uh, and we think of the receiving um, after those four movements as being so essential. And, and, and it is. And it's a great source of uh, pain for us when we can't take the Eucharist in person, when we take it spiritually. Um, but what I want to say is the act of offering the gifts that we have is as important as receiving uh, those gifts in the bread and wine made holy. Uh, wiser one than me said that Christianity is one person sharing another, with another person a crust of bread. And so often it doesn't quite feel enough in our economy, in this economy, but we know that a crust of bread in God's economy ultimately feeds 4,000, 5,000, can feed the whole world. And so we thank you, I thank you, and, and uh, for the gifts that you're offering um, and for this holy work that we'll be about together. So we'll begin with a opening hymn. Um, and the name of that hymn uh, is Come My Way, My Truth, My Life. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Be God. together. In you, O Lord, have, have I, I taken, taken refuge. Let, Let me never be put to shame. shame. Deliver, Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline, incline your, your ear to me. me. Make, Make haste to deliver me. me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Through Jesus Christ, for it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. 
but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled, Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as the fire and burn. Convert and consecrate our lives to our great good and your great glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The beginning of John's Gospel is perhaps more memorable and certainly the strangest of the four Gospel beginnings. Luke begins by telling us he wants to set us straight on the story that we've heard about Jesus. Matthew begins with a chronological uh, a, a, um, a chronology of and a 
uh, an ancestry of Jesus as a way of grounding Jesus's existence into the Jewish tradition as it was meant to be. And Mark, always the abrupt one, begins talking right away about John the Baptist. But in John's gospel, in John's gospel, we hear this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So it makes sense that at a critical moment in Jesus' ministry, that he would remind us that he is in the Father and the Father is in him. This chapter 14 from which we get this is, is called in John's Gospel the, um, the Farewell Discourse. And what's interesting about it is it doesn't come in John's Gospel right before Jesus leaves to be ascended to the Father, it actually comes the night of their last supper together. And things got very strange that night. We have Jesus and the 12 gathered together. And after supper, Jesus gets up, doesn't say a word, wraps a towel around his waist, and then announces that he will be washing their feet. There's some resistance. And Jesus then goes even further and says, you are no longer, we are no longer teacher and students. I am no longer your rabbi. We are friends. And in this relationship of friendship, on this momentous, scary night, Jesus befriends and entrusts his friendship with those who have been his followers. And right after this is when their hearts must have been troubled. Because at this point, Jesus' identity and mission as being sent from the Father, in the Father, into the world, to, re to affect an outcome that humanity was not able to do on its own, not able to rescue ourselves. So God comes to us and does that which we cannot do ourselves and does it in a way that has eternal significance for us. This is a pivotal moment in John's gospel. When he says, I want you to follow me. I want you to come after me. And God loved Thomas. If it wasn't for Thomas, I think I'd have more of an insecurity complex than I do. Because he asks the question that we're all asking. Where are we going? What is this way that you are talking about? And Philip chimes in and, and, and expresses confusion as well. And in this response to that, Jesus offers these iconic words. And I suggest that the words that Jesus offers were meant for them in particular but also for the future them as he was leaving and ascending into heaven. And most certainly, the words are meant for our benefit. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Whoever wishes to come to the Father must come through me. And what is this way? Well, for too long, I think we Christians have used this in kind of a triumphalism to say that this way is simply a matter of getting Jesus' name right, God's name right in Jesus, that no one else comes to the Father through this. 
through Jesus. And yet a closer look at the language, Jesus is talking to his followers as intimates. And the translation is better, for you, for you guys, the plural, for you all, for you all, I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the point of contact that brings you near to the Father and brings the Father near to you and brings us all in company and relationship. And in fact, the question that Thomas and Philip are trying to get to is they think of the way as a place. We don't know the way to that place. And what Jesus is talking about in John's gospel is relationship. Is getting right with God. If we want to get right with God, we need as his followers to get right with Jesus. And to get right with Jesus, we need to get right with each other. Because we're all bound up in this thing called divinity and humanity together. This is the way that Jesus is talking about. I have so much sympathy for the apostles at this point because I believe it is dawned on them that Jesus did not come to be the king that would make a happy ending for Jerusalem. That in fact, what he told them to be true was true. And that is that he would have to undergo a deep trial of suffering, go to the very heart of death, defeat that death, and rise in glory. And I have to tell you, particularly in this time of pandemic, I want to cling to a kind of optimism that if we are just faithful enough to God, things will turn out the way we want them. That's how the apostles felt too. But that is not where Jesus leads. And he says, ask for what you will and you will get it. He's talking to those apostles whose hearts and minds are conformed to Jesus, whose prayer is, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And there's a great temptation in ministry to want to bring comfort. And comfort not in terms of strength, but to offer platitudes that everything will work out and everything will be okay. And I believe that it will. But that doesn't mean that things will turn out as we want them to. It doesn't mean that people we love won't get sick. I think what we are seeing right now in people coming out on the streets is they've sort of been like, look, we've been good boys and girls, we've cooperated, we've done this thing, but now it's time to get back to life. Now it's time to get back to normal. I have to tell you, I have great sympathy in that. That's what I want it to be. But Jesus is talking about a different way. He is talking about a way that does not support fantasy, but it is a way through hardship. And what is that way? That way is the love of God in Jesus as expressed and experienced directly with God. But brothers and sisters, it is as well the love of the community supporting each other, making contact, staying connected, even in the midst of the dissatisfaction of how it doesn't measure up to a hug. Nonetheless, we reach out and we stay connected. 
one of the great gifts this week that I have received and that you've received as well are daily meditations from members of the community. And each one offers us a glimpse, like a perspective on a great diamond, of what it is the way of God, of what the way of God is. And the way of God is a pattern of life in which we grow in faith and courage by serving one another. That's what Jeannie Editor tells us. And Marty Riley tells us that the way forward is to follow Jesus as the light to follow the rest of our lives. He passed through the ultimate darkness so we don't have to. Karen Shorstrom recalled that it is through him that everything was created, even angels. Because of his carnation and death as a human being, he was able to bring God to humans and humans to God through his sacrifice on the cross. We are called to be that people which bring God to each other, being in relationship, experiencing our dissatisfaction with how things are not as we would have them be, and holding out a fierce hope that no matter what, come what may, Jesus will be faithful to us. God will be faithful to us. And we, God's people, will be faithful and kind and loving toward each other and toward the world. It is the only way forward. I share one more thing, not from the meditations. I encourage you to read the meditations. They are beautiful. I'm a little intimidated now, having read the depth of those. I'm thinking, boy, you better step up your preaching game, mister, because these are folks that know Jesus. They know what deep spirituality and spiritual reflection is. I was amazed. I close with this from a conversation with one of our elders that I had last night. You know, you pick up the phone and you call someone and you think, I'm kind of a pretty good chap. I mean, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of cheer them up or whatever it is. And honest to God, isn't it every time that I am the one that is cheered, that I am the one that is encouraged? And one of, one of you saints talked about taking walks down to the beach and smiling at people and acknowledging them. And she's a bit of a hugger. I think many of you will know who I'm speaking of. She's a bit of a hugger. She says, I can't hug them. And I said to her, you can't hug them, but, but dear, you bless them. You bless them when you smile at them, when you say hello. We bless each other and we bless the world when we acknowledge each other, when we smile through the masks. Isn't it amazing how our eyes can smile? I've never known that until we wore these masks. And then I see people and they see me and they know them and their eyes light up and I think, oh my gosh, they're smiling. This is the way. This is God's way. This is the sure way. May we follow it imperfectly, one day at a time, faithful, trusting, trusting. Amen.
Let us stand and say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Kneeling or standing as you wish, let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Gregory, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. We pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. We pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. We pray for those in any need or trouble, especially Georgette, Ruth, Michael, Annalise, Ali, Lisa, John, the Roth family, the Varan family. We pray for Lupe and Tom Ryan, Linda, John, Sharon, Farron and her family, Matthew, and Denise and Dennis. We pray for Amber and Justin. Are there others? Give you thanks for the work that Simon has found. Healthy. All of the helpers who Healing. quietly attend to the body of Christ in the world. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. We pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Ginny. We pray for all those who have died. I invite your prayers and thanksgivings at this time, either you're loud or silently. We give thanks for employment for Simon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for this community. All those who are making this worship happen. For all the ways that oh, we are gosh. reaching out to each other and to the world and bringing healing and showing the way. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. We pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. We also pray for Aubrey. We pray for Ronnie Harrell and Don Harrell as she all approaches mothers death. Today. For all mothers, for yes. Are acting as mothers
Almighty God, you give us the gift of prayer. Shine your light upon those who have no one to pray for them, all who have lost the heart to pray and any whose faith has ebbed away or never found a home in you. Make our lives a prayer of compassion that raises up the downtrodden, searches for your wisdom, and opens to us the imitation of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat> Happy Mother's Day, and may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's greet each other in the name of God. Peace be with you. 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 Great to see you, Russ. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let us now with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. All things come from thee, O Lord. Of thine own have, have we given, given thee. And then, uh, Steve Michaels, when it comes time for communion, when it comes time for communion, there's the prayer that we invite folks to say at home. And I would ask after you've received communion, if you would say that prayer at the podium, please. But at, af just after you've received communion. Do you see that on... It's on the page that begins at the top with fraction. Great, thank you. You ready? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sins of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in, in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his, his death, we proclaim, proclaim his resurrection, resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in this sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Virgin Mary St. John, St. Thomas, and St. Philip, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, and the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia.
Christ, our Passover is sanctified for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on this journey of faith, you are welcome to God's table to receive the bread and wine made holy. And you may receive communion, but it's, it's not required. See what you are, body of Christ. Dana, receive what you are, body of Christ. My brother, receive what you are, the body of Christ. My sister, receive what you are, the body of Christ. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar at your, at your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day. And remember the people of St. John's gathered now in our own homes, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creations, cr creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection and for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot be at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts, souls, and minds. Let nothing separate us from you. May we, may we, me, serve you in this life until by your grace we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Prayer of thanksgiving, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And, and now, now Father, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. We'll do the blessing and dismissal together. The blessing... Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you and loves you as a mother. So go in peace to follow the good road. And may the blessing of almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace we receive today is not ours alone. Let us go forth in the knowledge that God shall surely call us to be the answer to another's prayer. We will with God's help. Alleluia, alleluia. Our closing hymn is, O God, Beyond All Praising.